Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. So, uh, cellular therapy is really a very broad term, but it uses this idea that you can use cells rather than pills uh, or, or, or small molecules or drugs um, as if they were drugs. Um, and it could be, uh, of course, against cancer, you can use the immune system, but it also incorporates aspects that are not related to cancer. So, for instance, one part of my laboratory, we actually discovered, uh, really by accident, I should say, we discovered the stem cells that form cartilage. They were not known before, cartilage and bone. So one, uh, one aspect of cellular therapy is regenerative. So could you replace cartilage and you know, very common disease across the world, particularly disease of women with an enormous burden is osteoarthritis. Um, so we have a big now study going on and trying to use these cells again as pills We've been trying to use pills or drugs to ameliorate osteoarthritis now for decades and really not gotten very far. This would be the first time that one uses uh, 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 cellular therapies for regenerating, for instance, knees that have degenerated. You can use cellular therapies to alter, for instance, you can combine cellular therapies and gene therapies to cure diseases such as sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia, another disease with a huge burden in, in, in places like India. So it is a very broad term, but it asks a very simple question, which is that the cell is a living, uh, obviously a living thing. Can we use that? Can we manipulate that living thing in, a, in such a way that it becomes a therapeutic uh, entity? And if you can use that, can you use that in the context of not only cancer, but also other degenerative diseases? So before we go to Kiran, which cancers does this work on as yet? And which cancers, important cancers, it doesn't work on? So the first uh, cancers that uh, cell therapies were used for were blood cancers, uh, leukemias and lymphomas. Uh, the very first uh, successful trials were all in blood cancers. Um, I just recently profiled for the New Yorker, uh, probably the, I think she was the seventh patient, uh, an eight-year-old girl named Emily Whitehead, who had uh, multiply relapsed with uh, blood cancer and was almost uh, on the verge of dying, but she is now 15, uh, as far as we know, cured, uh, is being monitored very closely, but as far as we know, cured. So it works for blood cancers. More recently, it has worked for um, cancers such as lymphomas uh, and myeloma, another cancer with quite a large disease burden in, in, in places like India, where it's not worked effectively thus far, is in the so-called solid, common solid cancers. These would include pancreatic cancer. Um, these would include ovarian cancer and many others, lung cancer. In these cancers, they have not been so effective, these cellular therapies. And one of the most interesting arenas of investigation is why. Why is it that blood cancers are responsive? And why is it that these uh, solid tumors are not responsive? And uh, we and others have um, actually spent some time thinking about this question and trying to rework our ideas and thinking, you know, maybe we should try different cells, maybe we should try different combination of modalities. And there's all sorts of ideas about how to get these uh, cell therapies to work in solid tumors, solid cancers, lung cancer, um, cancers of uh, the pancreas, uh, liver, and so forth. 